Is debt beating you down? You need discipline. You need the Debt Ninja. If you've been caught in a financial trap and need to be set free, then you need the Debt Ninja. Want to stop those harassing collection calls? Start saving thousands in interest and fees and get out of debt fast? Then you need to call the Debt Ninja. The Debt Ninja will find the best companies across the country that will help you consolidate all your bills into one easy payment, reduce your payments by 30 to 50%, and get you out of debt fast. If you have unsecured debt of $10,000 or more, such as credit cards, loans, or medical bills, call the Debt Ninja for a free 15-minute consultation. Call 800-826-1246. 800-826-1246. That's 800-826-1246. Call today. The Debt Ninja. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing to full maturity. A Black Wolf Editorial Services who strives to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to the line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's bio for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, Visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough as nails holster, For your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. My name is Jesse. I'm a United States Special Forces widow. This gives me a unique perspective on the world around us. If you're willing to listen... I'll tell you how I see it, and I won't pull any punches. This is my POV, which stands for Point of View. All right, this is Jesse. How y'all doing tonight? It's great to be back with you. Yes. Oh, the weekend has been so filled with international news. I gotta say, in some ways... I was glad to see that the news wasn't completely dominated by politics. 
I will grant you there was still a ton of politics. Come on. Now, you know me. I don't talk politics. Well, unless you want North Korea's politics. So... I'm in the chat room at klrnradio.com. And I got John S. in there. He said he's actually kind of kind of trying to drive uh, Daniel Stafford, who happens to follow me right out on my heels, I might add. On Monday nights, he is on at 10 p.m. Be sure and tune in. He's always a blast. Never know what he's going to say. His show's a little more U.S.-based than mine. All right. Have you been hiding under a rock? And I didn't say Iraq. I said a rock. If you haven't. Yep, that's the show prep. Mosul. Did I mention Mosul? Mosul. Now, let's get North Korea out of the way. It'll take 30 seconds, and then we're going to move on. North Korea had a failed missile launch over the weekend. Now, of course, all right, do I need to tell you the UN condemned it, Japan flipped out, and Pyongyang's warned it warned may carry out further nuclear tests. I've got one audio clip. And then we will be moving on to Mosul. All right. So, let me see if I got that show clip already pulled up. No, I don't have it pulled up, but I can. All right. It's... About two minutes long. You've probably already heard it, but we're going to give it a shot again because this was, I believe, an ABC clip. Two days ago, yet another North Korean missile test. It failed, but it's the latest provocation in a year when the country shocked the world with its fourth and fifth nuclear weapons tests. Now a senior official tells NBC News exclusively that it won't stop at five tests. There may be a sixth, a seventh or an eighth nuclear test, he says. You will not back away. You will not stop your nuclear tests. No, he says we won't back down. It's a threat America's UN ambassador, who visited the Korean border last week, calls extremely grave. We need to, to ramp up the pressure. Because this isn't just a threat to the United States and the Republic of Korea, this is a threat to mankind. She says North Korea is more dangerous than ever. Its troops facing U.S. forces across a volatile Korean border. This isn't just the front line of an unfinished war. This is the flashpoint of a new conflict over North Korea's nuclear weapons program. And tensions are running high. North Korea claims it's accelerating its nuclear program because the U.S. flew nuclear bombers near its border this summer and held exercises it fears are aimed at removing its leader, Kim Jong-un. You have no doubt the U.S. is trying to target Pyongyang and your leader. No doubt. No doubt. Now it's even threatening a preemptive nuclear strike on the U.S. If we see U.S. nuclear forces moving against our country, he says, we will strike first. There is no evidence North Korea can mount a nuclear warhead on a missile or reach any U.S. state. North Korea's the U.S. is now attack. pushing for new, punishing U.N. sanctions against North Korea. But so far, they've failed to deter Kim's nuclear drive. The hard question now is, what will? Bill Neely, NBC News. All right, so that was an exclusive from NBC News. Now... As he stated, we don't know if North Korea can mount a nuclear warhead on a missile. Are they working on it? You bet. Do I expect a six nuclear test? Yeah, I do. If I had to go out on a limb and take a guesstimate, right around the election. 
They like to stir stuff up. What better thing to do just a couple of days right before the U.S. election than to do another nuclear test? I mean, come on, folks. All right. Now, the big story of the day. The big story of the day. Oh, one more thing. The experts say that despite the failures, North Korea could be fielding a missile next year. And this is according to, let me find the expert's name that's quoted in the article. All right, I'll just read parts of it. The U.S. military said on Saturday it detected a failed launch of a Musudan, the latest in a series, series of violations of United Nations resolutions. The U.S. Stra Strategic Command, a.k.a. STRATCOM, said the missile launch failed in near North Korea's northern western city of Kusong. South Korea's missile military said the missile failed immediately after launch, but neither it nor Pentagon suggested reasons. The Musudan has a range of approximately 3,000 kilometers, which is 1,860 miles for those of you who are kilometer challenged like myself. This would put South Korea and Japan and possibly Guam into its range. Of course, Pyongyang claims it has succeeded in miniaturizing a warhead that can be mounted on a missile, but this has never been independently verifying. John Schilling, a spa aerospace engineer special specializing in rocket, rock rocket propulsion, said it was noteworthy North Korea had launched the missile from its west coast rather than from a purpose-built test facility. Moving to a roadside near Kusong is like taking the train wheels off the bicycle, seeing if you really have mastered something new. And he wrote a lovely article on the website 38 North that monitors North Korea. Schilling said the move showed that in spite of only one successful launch to show for seven attempts, North Korea was simply not repeating all failures or continuing with an aggressive test schedule. If they continue at this rate, the Musudan Intermediate Range Ballistic Missile could enter operational service sometime next year, much sooner than previously expected. All right. Do I need to remind you who freaks out every time North Korea launches or attempts to launch a missile? Japan loses the plot. South Korea always goes ape. And, of course, the UN Security Council always, always goes, You shouldn't do that! Stop, 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 stop! Now, need I remind you, China is on the United Nations Security Council, and until we get a firm grip on China, and China actually decides they want to do something about this pesky little thing called North Korea, nothing's going to happen, folks. All right, big story of the day, Mosul. The rest of the show is likely to center around Mosul, Iraq, Iran, and all the fun on that. Now... For, those, for a refresher, for those of you who wonder why Mosul's so important, let's take a listen to the audio clip I've got for you. The battle for Mosul is a really big deal, and here's why. Mosul is the second biggest city in Iraq, and it's the last remaining ISIS stronghold in the country. It's also the place where ISIS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi first declared that he had established an Islamic caliphate or state. Now, the last time the Iraqi army was in Mosul was back in 2014, when we were fleeing from ISIS fighters. This time, it's hoping to reverse those losses. Iraqi army forces won't be the only ones on the battlefield, though. Kurdish Peshmerga forces will be involved, and the U.S. military will also be playing a supportive role. But the battle won't be easy. Officials estimate there are between three and 5,000 ISIS fighters still inside the city, and they have created an elaborate network of defenses. They fill moats with oil and then set it alight, creating these thick black plumes of choking smoke. Houses are booby-trapped. The streets are littered with IEDs. And then there's the human toll. An estimated one million civilians are still living in the city of Mosul. And the UN says that the exodus that could follow a battle might be one of the biggest man-made displacements in recent times. 
Some commanders estimate it could take as much as three months to take the city. And then there's the aftermath to deal with. But if the operation is successful, it will deal a major blow to ISIS. All right, got caught up chatting with John in the chat room. Come on and join us, klrnradio.com. There's a link right on our homepage to the chat room, which reminds me I haven't done my host monkey duties and tweeted out a link to my show. So I'm going to take a a couple seconds to do that while I play, while we discuss the basics of Mosul. All right. Iraq and Kurdish Kurdish forces launched a long-awaited offensive to drive the Islamic State or ISIL, or DASH, ISIS, ISIL, DASH, all the same group of terrorists, folks. I don't care what name you call them. They're evil. They're terrorists. They do crazy stuff. All right. So, the the attack has started. They're trying to free this city of Mosul. There, as you heard, Mosul's pretty important. It really is. Now, there's another city that they briefly touched over, touched on, called Dabiq. I got a clip from one of my Saturday slowdowns. We're going to play that before we get it too far into this, because you're going to hear the name Dabiq come up in a couple more of my audio clips. So, I want you to realize the importance of Dabiq. All right? Because it's huge! So they, they, I don't know if you're familiar with, with their magazine, Dabiq. Uh, this, it's named after a town in Syria called Dabiq. Uh, they believe that that's the spot where the kind of final battle, the, their battle of Armageddon is going to take place. That, that's actually why they're in Syria to begin with. Uh, they're, they're kind of hanging out, or they're trying to get, you know, hang out at, at Dabiq and wait for their, their Messiah to, to arrive and, and basically save them. And, and, and so they're, they believe that this battle of Armageddon is going to take place and, and they think it's going to happen soon and they're going to be a key member of that. So they're, they're doing everything they can to, to spark Armageddon, essentially. In other words, they think that they can make their, quote, Messiah arrive on their timetable. It's essentially, yes. Yeah. Okay, that's in my mind and... So they, they, I don't know if you're familiar with what they're... Ma- all right, trying to stop the clip. I start trying to start it again. Sorry, that's what happens when your host monkey doesn't have her host kitty, and she's doing three things at once. Now, as as you heard, ISIS, or Daesh as I prefer to call them, is an ap- apocalyptic terrorist group. They believe they can bring the end of times about on their timetable. Host opinion, cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. Need to get a couple of sound effects for these moments. Host, host opinion, they're crazy. Now, the importance of the beak. We've already taken it back. And yes, I got the audio clips to prove it. So you never have to take my word. I back up everything I say or try to, unless I'm giving you my opinion, in which case you can tell. All right. The Mosul Offensive is the largest, most complex military operation in Iraq since the forces withdrew in 2011. It involves an estimated 25,000 troops from the army, the Kurdish Peshmerga, Sunni tribal forces, Shiite militias, and trust me, there's others. Right now, they're all playing nice. Give it a few days, folks. Give it a few days. Now, there are fears, because we have to realize, there's a million people, civilians, innocent types, trapped in Mosul. They couldn't get out. And they've been living under Daesh rule for two years. They've seen some pretty horrific stuff. And let me tell you, I wouldn't want to be anywhere near 
this mess. You want to know why? I got the audio clip to show you that one too. Behind me now has just gone in. Listen to the background what noises. Must surely be a substantial explosion. We haven't been hearing aircraft in the past few moments, so that may well be one of a number of car bombs that ISIS have been deploying in their bid to try and keep the Peshmerga off this road. It is a volatile situation and it is also one in which the Peshmerga at this stage appear to be prevailing. They've taken this five or six kilometer stretch of the road here, but the villages around it do still remain volatile. And that is the question, what kind of resistance will they continue to face? The Iraqi military too at some point will have to push down here towards Mosul. But this has been an effort with much international support, a lot of coalition planning, American air power. Those pops are not fireworks, folks. That reporter's got gunshots going off. One came right at me. What are they shooting at? Let's move, yeah? And now you know why. I don't want to be anywhere near this. Nobody's safe. So that's why I'm happy to discuss this from my chair. All right. I've got some other really good statements. Here's the official Lieutenant General Townsend's official statement about the kickoff of stuff in Mosul. And then I've got a lo I'm looking on for an update for you. They say it's going well so far. Earlier today, Iraqi security forces launched their counterattack to liberate Mosul from ISIL, also known as Daesh. This operation to regain control of Iraq's second largest city will likely continue for weeks, possibly longer. Iraq is supported by a wide range of coalition capabilities, including air support, artillery, intelligence, advisors, and forward air controllers. But to be clear, the thousands of combat forces who will liberate Mosul are all Iraqis. This liberation battle comes after more than two years of Daesh oppression in Mosul during which they committed horrible atrocities, brutalized the people, and asserted the city was one of their twin capitals. ISIL's cruelty and reach has shown that they are not just a threat in Iraq and Syria, but to the region and the entire world. Over the course of these past two years, a coalition of more than 60 nations has united to defeat ISIL. We have conducted tens of thousands of precision strikes to support Iraqi operations. We've trained and equipped more than 54,000 Iraqi forces. And we've supported our Iraqi partners as they fought to liberate their country. As we provide our support, we will continue to use precision to accurately attack the enemy and to minimize any impact on innocent civilians. We can't predict how long it will take for the Iraqi security forces to defeat Daesh in Mosul. But we know they will succeed, just as they did in Beji, in Ramadi, in Fallujah, and more recently in Giara and Sharkat. This may prove to be a long and tough battle, but the Iraqis have prepared for it, and we will stand by them. The Iraqi security forces and the coalition are not only fighting for the future of Iraq, we are fighting to ensure the security of all of our nations. We salute the bravery and commitment of the Iraqi security forces to this mission, and wish them good luck and God's blessings in this battle. All right, now, if you heard mention of JTAC, those are your forward air controllers. They got a tough job. They are literally up there with the troops, embedded with the foreign forces. They are right there. They've got Iraqis to their left and may have Kurds to their right. Who knows? But they have to live with the same conditions as all of the other forces. Now, I gotta say, 
Anybody who says this does not put our troops in harm's way or in, quote, combat. I know, I know General Townsend is required to tow the party line, but he ne notice he never said they weren't in danger. He said their role. He named a couple of positions that absolutely puts them right next to the troops doing the fight. He said that Iraqis were leading the way. Trust me, there's Peshmerga. There's, there's, uh, Peshm remember, Peshmerga are your Kurds. Then you've got your Turks. Turkey's there. Of course, Iraq's there. You got Shiites and Sunnis from various tribes and regions that have formed their own militias. They're all over the place. Then you got the U.S. And you've got our friends Iran. Oh, yeah. Remember those Syrian scorecards? Boy, oh, boy, do they get complicated. You need a scorecard just to keep up with these folks. Why do you think? I keep my scorecard handy. All right. There is a couple little comments I want to make. This is the first time Iraq and the Kurd Kurds are actually fighting side by side. Let's hope it's something good. Now, I've got a clip here. Let's see if I got the right one. From the Department of Defense press conference today. And this is from Peter Cook. He says it's going ahead of schedule. Let me see if I can find the right section because he spoke for 49 minutes. We're not playing all that, folks. Now, this morning in Iraq, as announced by Prime Minister Abadi, Iraqi security forces, with the support of the counter-ISIL coalition, began operations to liberate Mosul. They started moving at 6 a.m. Baghdad time. This is a decisive moment in the counter-ISIL campaign. It is in Mosul that ISIL's leader chose to announce its so-called caliphate. Mosul is also historically a diverse, multi-ethnic, multi-sectarian city, precisely the opposite of ISIL's hate-filled ideology. So Mosul carries a great deal of symbolic importance in this fight as well. But more than a symbol, Mosul is also a city of more than a million people. Over two years, ISIL has brutalized the city's population, committing horrific atrocities. This is a fight to free hundreds of thousands of innocent Iraqis from ISIL's rule. This fight is taking place with Iraqis firmly in the lead, including thousands of Iraqi army personnel, counterterrorism forces, and federal police. Kurdish Peshmerga and Sunni tribal forces are also playing a critical role in this fight. They have the support of an international counter-ISIL coalition of 60 nations led by the United States, providing av advice and assistance, logistical support, intelligence, and precision air power. The coalition has conducted more than 54,000 training cycles in, for Iraqi security forces. It has conducted more than 10,000 precision strikes in Iraq, including more than 70 in the Mosul area just this month. And Iraqi forces will have the continued support of the coalition as they move forward. The role of U.S. and coalition forces will continue to be one of supporting the ISF. We are on the first day of what we assume will be a difficult campaign that could take some time. Early indications are that Iraqi forces have met their objectives so far and that are, they are ahead of schedule for this first day. All right, so they're ahead of schedule for the first day. None of us really know if that's true. Hope so. Hope it continues. I don't want to see a lot of casualties coming out of this on the good guy's side, okay? I mean, really. We've had enough. Really have, folks. All right. It is almost time. We are almost at the bottom of the hour. We are almost there. So we are going to probably head off to that commercial break. Give me a minute to visit with everybody in the chat room. 
see what's going on. And then I will be back with you guys after we pay them bills. Just got to get that commercial break all queued up for you. All right. I will see you guys on the other side. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing to full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's file for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, Visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street casino and how to get the money you need when you need it simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method and to get your free report, go to 29security.com. That's the number 29security.com. 29security.com. Go to 29security.com.
right. Thank y'all for hanging in there with me over that commercial break. Now, everybody thinks this is being a nice, pretty war because, well, we aren't seeing, thank God, we are not seeing flag draped caskets coming into Dover. I've got to say, thank God on that one. You have never been at Dover Air Force Base at 3 in the morning when the plane carrying the body, of, in my case, of my husband, is coming in for a landing. I pray no United States Armed Forces family ever has to go through that again. However, I know there will always be deaths on active duty. I just pray the number is very small. All right. Dash claims to have launched at least 12 suicide bombings during the first day of the battle for Mosul. And this is according to the group's news agency, which I'm not going to even cite their name because guess what? I don't care. All the suicide attacks were purportedly carried out south and east of the Mosul. Of Mosul, and this means they were tar targeting the Peshmerga and the remaining four Iraqi, four striking Iraqi forces. However, Iraq's popular mobilization unit said that all 12 suicide bombers were neutralized. All right. Who knows? I'm not sure. All, and uh, according to the pop popular mobilization unit, all 12 suicide bombers were neutralized. Eight by the Iraqi army and four by the Peshmerga. All of our forces were able to counter the SBBIEDs. Now... There is a fog of war going on. And I'm going to warn you folks. During this fog of war. During the fog of war. Anybody can claim almost anything. And let me tell you. It's going to take time. The news reports coming out are going to be one way, one minute, one way, the other. I was lucky enough to be able to speak with a member of our coalition forces. No, I'm not. He's not American. And I'm not going to tell you what country he's from. I was lucky enough to have a brief, and I do mean brief, conversation with him. He's like, even as we're kicking this thing off, the plans are changing by the minute. If you had an update an hour ago, it's probably already out of date. This was actually something I found to be a bit of a relief. And if you'd like to know why, I'll tell you. Because while I was doing some early work on this particular issue, I was scrolling through Press TV. And for those of you who don't recall or don't follow my show on a regular basis, Press TV is Iranian News. Yes. All right. Press TV is Iranian news. So we already know they're where they stand, right? All right. So Press TV. Remember, Iran's got a dog in this fight. Do we need to go over our Sunni and Shia scorecard here? All right, might as well. Now, just as a reminder, the main reason, the main thing that started this so many centuries ago, shortly after the death of Muhammad, is they couldn't, I agree, on a successor. Oh, yeah. Now, Iran's mostly Shia. Kurds are mostly Sunni. So, that's why Iran and the Kurds aren't exactly... Iraq's got a bit of both. All right? And Turkey is Shia. Or no, Turkey I think is Sunni. Give me a second, I want to confirm my facts.
Yeah, Turkey's saying that she is she a role in the Iraq's Mosul battle will increase problems. Because Turkey sent their own troops into the northern part of the country in the past year to combat terrorism organiz- terrorist organizations. Which, in if we're looking at Turkey, they probably mean they're after the Kurds, folks. And that's the Kurds that the United States is backing! Oh, didn't I remind you you need a scorecard to keep up with these? All right, quick rundown. Syria is propped up by Russia, which is backed by Iran, and China's on on that scorecard. So Bashar al-Assad of Syria is propped up by Russia. Russia and Turkey are frenemies. They would like to have economic relations, but it's iffy. Now, and what started their thing is that there was a civilian jetliner shot out of the sky. All right. So that kind of ticked off that that whole thing. Now, we use a Turkish airbase to launch attacks against ISIS. So Russia doesn't like that. And just to remind all of you, Russia has now fortified Syria with a lot more troops. Boy, do I mean a lot more troops. And, of course, air defenses. And then, of course, they've issued the lovely threat to the United States of telling us, you stop bombing anywhere in Turkey or we're going to shoot you out of the sky. And just as a reminder, folks, about a week, ten days ago now, I'd have to check the calendar. Russia decided to follow North Korea's lead, sort of, and launched, as in test-fired, Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles. Yes, I said ICBM missiles. And for those of you who do not know what an ICBM missile is, an ICBM missile is the kind that can strike the United States from another continent. It is called an Intercontinental Ballistic Missile for a reason. Oh yeah, these are the, the city killers. These are the ones everybody keeps a lot of our military and a lot of our intel people up at night. ICBMs are no laughing matter. No nuclear device is a laughing matter. However, comma, the ICBM is the biggest and scariest and baddest of them all. All right? All right. So, Russia's saber rattling, in some cases a la North Korea. And then you've got Good old Turkey going, kill the Kurds, kill the Kurds, kill the Kurds. Meanwhile, the Kurds, we think they're pretty good, and they're kicking tail and not bothering to take names when it comes to Daesh. So, and then you've got Iraq who's sitting here going, uh, uh, wait a minute, this is our country, folks. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, Iraq, we'll get back to you. And no offense, that's about what it's become. That is about what it has become. Like I said, that's a quick rundown on your serious scorecard for those of you. Because this Mosul story is not going away soon. And do not forget the humanitarian crisis that is likely to emerge. We're talking at least 200,000 people, if not more. And, of course, the UN set up camps, but some people say there's only room for 100,000. And then, of course, Daesh could pull one of their lovely tricks and decide to use said civilians as human shields. Where have we seen that before? Hamas? And by the way, Hamas is a recognized terrorist group, according to the United States. So, there are so many working pieces in this. I'm going to work on trying to get a Mosul scorecard up for you and see if I can get more information on where this is and when this, what's all going on. Now, I got one more audio clip I want to bring you before we shift gear 
just a little bit. Because I think this has important information in it, folks. And this was also from the DOD press conference. Right, I understand that. Um, uh, <clears throat> since you do, uh, did, you mentioned uh, General Townsend's comments, he, um, I would, um, he did say uh, in his statement today that there are J tax um, that that was part of the U.S. capability being um, provided to the Iraqis. I'm wondering if you could um, help us understand at what level the J tax are are operating, and then more broadly, can you tell us some as up to date figures as you have on how many U.S. troops um, are in Iraq today? How many are, is it still about 500 or so in Kiara? How close are they to the fight um, at this point? Are they at the battalion level? I mean, these are things we've sort of discussed all along, but at this point, do you know, are they operating as advisors at the battalion level, the brigade level? Um, and do you know if they are using Apaches in this so far? Okay, so several questions yes, in there. I'll try, and, I'll, tr I'll try and get to as many of those as, as we can. Uh, first of all, just to put it in context again, we have, as we've talked about, about 5,000 U.S. forces in Iraq um, at this time, all part of uh, this effort, uh, part of the coalition to defeat ISIL. Many of those people are in uh, enabler roles. They may be trainers. We've talked about the 12, 12 Iraqi brigades that have been trained for this fight. Again, many of the U.S. forces have been part of that effort. We have a number of people providing logistical support to this effort. Uh, we've talked a lot about the effort to to put Q, uh, Q West into a position to be sort of a forward staging area for this fight. Um, that's a good example of some of the logistical support that's being provided. At each of these locations, of course, there might also be f needs for force protection. Those are some of the U.S. forces. Um, and we have some people uh, in the train, advise, uh, and uh, assist mission as well uh, with uh, Iraqi forces. They've been primarily up to this point, as we've indicated, at the uh, headquarters level. Uh, the commander there, General Townsend, has had the authority to uh, use advisors at a lower level. Um, he has, up to this point, uh, used that very sparingly. And as the course of this fight plays out, he'll determine what uh, the appropriate use of our forces are in that context. But I'm not going to get into specific numbers today, particularly on the first day of the Right. He didn't want to get into specific numbers, and I totally agree to that. But if you didn't catch that number, 5,000 U.S. forces on the ground in Iraq. Oh, yeah, I said 5,000. That's a lot, folks. All right, I've got just a few minutes left. Got a couple more things. I didn't want to do a whole show on Mosul. We did a large chunk of it. I told you it was going to be that way. Now, remember that other country I mentioned? Remember that other country? Iran, got a couple notes about that. Remember that crazy nuclear deal we signed with them? Yeah, that thing I'm always saying that's about as worth, worthless as the paper it was printed on. Well, Marco Rubio, who is uh, a member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, has put out a piece on the Iran nuclear deal. And this is an opinion piece, all right? All right. When it, we now know that the president authorized $1.7 billion in cash ransom payment to Iran. Oh, yes, he did. And guess what? Guess what? Iran What's better than getting 20?
Oh, good grief. Who knows what that was? All right, killed the website. And guess what? Iran has now taken more Americans hostage under trumped up charges. You know what ransom produces. Ransom makes people want to do more crap. All right? All right. Now. So. We recently learned President Obama dismantled a key part of ballistic missile sanctions against Iran eight years early. Wait. Obama released them from sanctions eight years early. Oh, yeah. And, of course, Obama has been praising the Iran deal. And, by the way, folks, for anybody listening in, this is as close to U.S. politics as I get. I don't do the elections except on debate nights, which we will, of course, be featuring here on KLRN Radio. So, a senior Iranian official has also stated Tehran has been providing intelligence to Russia for military targeting, helping Moscow support Assad and his slaughter of innocent Syrians. Come on. They bombed a freaking UN convoy. They have bombed hospitals in Aleppo. They have Iranian backed Houthi rebels have shot off missiles at our United States Navy ships. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't think I have that audio handy, but. Oh, let's try this one. Don't know. No, don't have the audio handy, so we're just going to not be bothered with it. All right. So Iran, Iran who never has been a good citizen of the world, is acting up again. All the meanwhile, lovely German minister heads to Iran. Oh, yeah. German transport minister Alexander Dobrindt arrives arrives at a cabinet meeting in the Chancellor of Berlin, Germany. That's what the photo was of. However, German transport minister will travel to Iran with a trade delegation Friday to meet with the transport and industry minister. Siemens has been in long negotiations with Iran over an order for track technology and ICE 3 trains, a model of intercity trains long used in Germany. The deal would be worth more than 2 billion euros. That's $2.25 billion if if Siemens can get it. Germany has traditionally had close economic ties with Iran and after last year's nuclear accord, which paved the way for ending sanctions. German firms want to do business there again. Big surprise, folks. It was a cash cow once. They want their cow ca- they want their cash cow back. All right. How have Iran's military capabilities developed since 1979? Well, in a large part they have developed because Iran figured out how to evade sanctions, folks. And if you do not believe me, there is a book out there that will tell you all about it. And it was written by a member, a former member of the Revolutionary Guard Corps in Iran. Yes, that is the Iranian military. The pen name is Reza Khalili. The book is A Time to Betray. He was so dismayed with the actions his country was taking. He betrayed his country to the CIA and actually worked for the United States in Iran for over a decade. Under the Shah in the 1970s, Iran was going through a master modernization program. Its armed forces were being equipped with the best in class technologies, mostly from the United States and Britain. Oh, yeah. 
The Revolution, 1979. Fast forward. All orders were canceled by Western suppliers and stringent measures, measures were taken against com companies or countries from providing Iran with spare ports or technical assistance for equipment Iran already had. Iran did not have to rebuild its defense capabilities from, from scratch, but a radical strategy, strategic redirection from its military was the only way to assure survival. So they put together a new approach. All right, and if you recall, they have used things like speedboats. So the long war, so they have used cyber warfare. They are using an asymmetric warfare tactic. By asymmetric warfare, they're not going to meet you on the battlefield. They're going to attack you in cyberspace. They're going to board one vessel that strayed just a couple meters into their wa waters and take the people hostage. And of course, Tehran has correct connected with China. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And of course, the minute the minute the sanctions were lifted, guess what happened? Yes, Russia's like, we're coming, Tehran. Don't worry, we got all this stuff headed your way. Oh yeah. It's the most important export market for Russian defense projects, including fighter aircraft such as the MiG-29, Su-24 submarines, and Kilo-class submar submarines, air defense systems such as the recently delivered, yes, I said recently delivered, S-300. Oh, yeah. China, which also sold more strategic str weapons such as cruise missiles to Iran, essentially helped Iran lay the foundations for its indigenous missile program. Wait, we're expecting China to do something about North Korea's missile program when here they are giving the other most blackballed country in the world missile technology? Oh, my gosh. As if they're going to actually step up and do anything, anything to stop North Korea. North Korea and Tehran are coordinating on all this stuff, folks. Now, I do have one last article. Remember I mentioned when you pay ransom, they take more hostages? An Iranian-American businessman arrested in Iran a year ago, yes, a year ago, was seen publicly for the first time Monday in a video posted online by the country's judicial news service. Now, the video was highly anti-American, so we're not even going to go into that. But it did show the businessman with his hands up and his United States passport and United Arab Emirates resident identification card. The video also showed all kinds of other horrific things, such as Jason Rezaian, who the Washington Post reporter who was accused of spying for the U.S., and the American soldiers that they detained. Don't even get me started on that. We don't need to get on rant, Bill. Mr. Namazi's arrest appeared to be part of a broader crackdown by Iran's hardline security forces against Iranians with Western ties in the aftermath of the nuclear deal that President Hassan Rouhani le reached last year with foreign powers. The deal restricted Iran's nuclear work in exchange for relaxed economic sanctions. Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah al-Khamenei has repeatedly warned Iranians to beware of what he has called the nefarious, nefarious American efforts to use the nuclear deal as leverage to corrupt Iranian society and subvert Islamic revolutionary government. All right. And on that note, folks, yeah, you know what's coming. On that note, on that note, you know what's coming. For those of you that don't, you're going to have to listen and find out. On that note, folks, I'm out of here!